we making people money, stealing that money, not stealing, earning that money from BetMGM. That's uh, literally Jay Croucher and I's entire goal this year is to get as much mo- as much of BetMGM's money in our pockets and our viewers' Your pockets. pockets and then when we have that profit, we will buy a proper table. That's what we're doing. Like I've thought That's about starting a go fundraiser, but no, we're gonna this I'm just you know what I'm gonna I'm gonna use BetMGM money to buy this show a proper table. All right. They might recast you guys for the remake of the town at this point with how you're doing. The town. One yeah. of the most yeah. underrated films yes. of the past fifteen years. A really Great solid moment. film. Very rewatchable as well. Very, very rewatchable. I got nothing even bad to say about it, the town. Right, well, I'm not gonna it, spoil it because it came out this century. Yeah, there you go. So everyone can watch happy out with Matthew Berry, not needing to know about what happened to uh Ben Affleck and Jeremy Renner and Co. Okay. All By right. the way, very quickly, uh, NBCSportsEdge.com tweeting out Todd Bowles calling Chris Godwin and Julio Jones game time decisions. So we will check that out. We will see what happens there. Sunday night game right here on NBC and Peacock, right? That's right. All right. We are going to get to the Bucks in just a moment. But before okay. we do, we are starting with the Jets. I don't think that's just because I'm here, but we are starting with the Jets. <laughs> yeah. Zach Wilson. Why talk about Tom Brady when <laughs> yes. we talk about Zach that's Wilson? That's exactly right. Zach Wilson is back, and his offensive yeah. coordinator did talk about him this week. Seems pretty excited by his return. It's cool. It's, it's just cool for him. You know, any whether it's Zach or anyone that's missed time because of injury, I mean, um, you just want to see him on the grass, you know. And uh, so he gets to be out there. He put in a lot of work. Um, to put himself in this position to, to, to get back, you know, we I don't think anyone really knew after, uh, you know, after the injury, particularly right when it happened, um, what was going to happen, you know, and, and how long he was going to be out. So to, to get him back and going into week four and, um, you know, I know he feels 100 percent healthy and he's going to go play his game. LaFleur took your uh, hat over the face style yeah. from week one. <laughs> He's, he must yeah. be watching the happy hour. Yeah, here. probably. I like it. I like it a lot. And I think we're all excited. Listen, Zach Wilson on the grass, so much better than like Zach Wilson in your mom's kitchen, right? I mean, let's be clear, right? That's it's a better place yes. for Zach Keep Wilson the field. to be. Keep on Zach the field. For the sake the of America. Yeah, exactly. For the sake of, you know, 100%. <laughs> mom's across America. Mom's across America. <laughs> yes. Exactly. It's all so right. Bad. Well, with Wilson's return, yeah. uh, we we're looking at both Brees Hall and Michael Carter, the Steelers' defense, obviously, especially without T.J. Watt, pretty vulnerable group. My take is the Jets are going to take the ball out of Wilson's hands in this return. I think it's going to be a slow ramp up. When you hear something like that, what is your take on Hall and Carter? We're both yeah. factored in this offense. Yeah, I like I like I like Brees Hall. I mean, I, I think that I I didn't love his ADP preseason, but I certainly now if you wound up with him, I mean, you know, Brees Hall was a top 13 fantasy running back last week. And Michael Carter was running back 50, right? He's averaging 5.3 yards per carry. He's got a 14% target share in this game. He's had a 60 or more scrimmage yards in every game he's played so far this season. He's playing a lot more snaps than Michael Carter is. Season high, 51% snap rate over uh, over over Michael Carter here. So Steelers, bottom 10 in the NFL in terms of most receptions uh, and, and yards per reception allowed to opposing running backs. Apologies. So uh, I do think uh, Brees Hall is viable this week. Made the love list. Others receiving votes this week. Connor, plus 1,400. Brees Hall, Offensive Rookie of the Year. You like that? You're a Jets guy? I do like it. I mean, they're obviously starting to shift more towards him. Flacco missed him on a wheel route should be touchdown last week. So these numbers can look a lot different if you factor in a 30-yard touchdown. He was wide open. So I think the most important thing is the Jets are going to, one, run the ball with Zach Wilson a ton, and two, start to shift those runs to Brees. And the Rookie of the Year field is just so wide open. We talked about Alave starting to go down a little bit. Obviously, Garrett Wilson is on this team, but... We'll see. What will be really interesting here is what happens with Garrett Wilson, Elijah Moore, Corey Davis. Elijah Moore was not good last year when um, uh, Wilson was under no, center. Absolutely. But again, different offense, second year. I, I don't know. For, for me, I, I just think this is one of those wait and see. Ideally, you're not yeah. starting any of the... Br- one of them will have a decent game here because it's not a bad matchup against Pittsburgh, but whether... I couldn't. We just don't know. We we need to see. So anyway, all right. I, I just hopefully we just it's a wait and see approach with the Jets wide receivers. All right, we teased it at the top. The Bucks offense. Mike Evans is, is back. Julio Jones and Chris Godwin. Nobody knows at this moment. Both questionable going into this game. Tom Brady right now. Really, really slow, uncharacteristic start for Brady. With Evans back, is he going to be on track? Uh, we certainly hope so. I mean, listen. I'm as a borderline top ten play here. We expect a lot of fireworks in this game. Right, um, you know, this should be two pretty good offenses in the Chiefs and the Buccaneers. Last I saw, over under was 45. 45 and a half. 45. Yep. It's up. It ticked up a little bit to 45 and a half. So, um, I, you know what? 
I've Brady's QB 10 so far this week. It's worth noting Kansas City has allowed seven passing touchdowns this season. That's second most in the NFL. And it's not like they face, you know, they did face Herbert, but they also faced Matt Ryan, yep. you know, last week. So uh, I think this is a get-right game for Tom Brady, especially if he gets Godwin or who and or Julio Jones back. We know he does get Mike Evans back. We saw signs of life from Russell Gage last week. Uh, Fournette will keep him honest. So I do like Tom Brady this week as a borderline QB one. Yeah, I think like it's still it's a bit jarring to see Mahomes v Brady on Sunday Night Football to be only a 45 and a half total, where 48 was the average total last season. Uh, same as last week, where Rogers v Brady was only 42. But like these are kind of defensive teams at the moment. Kansas City has a better defensive DVOA than offensive, uh, but I think that particularly Brady should be in a much better get right spot. I think he's just the product of his context. He looks like he kind of did in 2019 with the Patriots where he didn't have weapons. He still looks like the same guy. It's just guys aren't getting open. With Evans back, you would expect the ceiling to rise. Yeah, and I mean, it's worth noting, Kansas City allowing the fourth highest catch rate to wide receivers this season. You know, Evans, Evans right back into your lineup. All right, uh, staying in this game with the Chiefs offense, we have two guys that I want to know if they are flex viable. Juju Smith-Schuster coming in as wide receiver 36 for you, and then, of course, Clyde edwards Lair uh, coming in as RB28 for you. Yeah, so Juju I'm in on, right? I mean, again, I think that uh, the way you attack Tampa Bay's defense is in the middle of the field. I mean, you know, Dean and Davis have played really good on the perimeter, and so uh, Juju, who has 75 more yard, 75 or more yards and eight targets in two of the three games that he's played so far this year, he had that dud against the Chargers, but that was a short week. Um, Chargers are very good defense. So are, uh, so are the Buccaneers, obviously, as well, but his 18% target share ranks second on the team. He's not getting a lot of red zone looks, but I'm in on Juju this week. I am, however, out on Clyde Edwards E. Lair. Eight carriers or less in every game this this year. He's been buoyed. Buoyed? Boyed? Boyed. 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 You know, like a um, buoyed. 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 Right. Yeah, buoyed. Yeah, you know, <laughs> yeah. uh, whatever. He's been Tyler Boyd? he's been kept afloat. <laughs> he's been kept afloat by his touchdowns. And he has the second most receiving yards among running backs. Having said that, though, Jarek McKinnon has played 11 more snaps than CEH. Uh, this is much more of a committee than I think the box score indicates. And uh, I'm nervous about Clyde Edwards Elaire because the Tampa Bay's that we've talked about, Tampa Bay has really shut down pass catching running backs. Yeah, just one thing if Kansas City, if they don't have a good offensive game and it's the Bucks defense, so kind of measure a little bit, but they haven't been an amazing offense this year. So that's just one thing to watch with the absence of Tyreek Hill. Speaking of an offense struggling that we usually have high expectations for, the Niners taking on the Rams defense. Everyone's been down so far for this offense. Now they're week two of Jimmy G starting the game. How do you weigh the Niners offense, especially Kittle and Debo right now? I mean, I think you got to start them. Right? I mean, you don't have a better option at tight end than Kittle. I know it's been, you know, he's been injured and then bad week last week, but I think you got to start him. And Debo's been fine. 21 yeah. targets so far this season. You know, last three games against the Rams, by the way, 26.4 fantasy points oh, wow. per game. So even when they know he's, it's coming, Debo still finds a way to produce. But everyone else has sort of want to take a wait and see approach. I don't mind Jeff Wilson Jr. as a running back. He's had 100 total yards each of the past two weeks. He's getting a lot of work. Um, so he's more of a, a lower end RB2 for me this week. Brandon Ayuk theoretically should be the guy who benefits most from Jimmy G coming in over Trey Lance. He was Jimmy's favorite red zone target, so he's another guy to watch. He got in the end zone last week as well, so just one guy who I think has some upside. But are you starting Ayuk this week? Not with confidence. I yeah, don't want really any part of these guys outside of Debo, and then you have to start Kittle and Wilson, but not expecting greatness. Yeah, he's wide receiver 38 for me this week. All right, one more break, and when we're back, it's time for Last Call. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.